Tara Webb, sound effects editor and re-recording mixer for Jane Campion's film, The Power of the Dog. Uh, Tara, I was fortunate enough to speak with Ari, Ari Wagner, the cinematographer from Power of the Dog, and she talked about how fastidious Jane was in her preparation and how much prep time that she had and, like, you guys had on the film, I guess. So I wanted, like, how did that attention to detail that she has and kind of, you know, preparedness help you on the sound front? Yeah, I mean, working with Jane was such an awesome experience. Um, she has such a strong focus on character and story as do most but you know really really strongly and um and so a lot of the conversations early on were, was about that and how because the performances of the film are so subtle and delicate and how she really wanted to approach the sound the same way um and so we, we when we came on they were still in the edit um so we were able to feed through you know ideas and that kind of thing through to um, them in the edit, which was a great kind of back and forth, getting feedback. And so by the time the lock came, Jane had already heard a lot of things already. And then we could sit down and really kind of dig in and, you know, um, work, work through what, what she liked, what she didn't like, and, and kind of just continue to build, build on that, um, which was it's always great when we can work with the edit in conjunction. It's, it's, I think it always makes for a better, better end product. Yeah, for sure. So you mentioned, like, I mean, what were some of the things that she was, like, very much looking for or that you guys were able to, like, collaborate with her with? Um, well, I think we spoke a lot about creating that expanse of Montana and the ranch. Um, and um, and then, you know, on the flip side, then that versus the, the Burbeck house, which was quite you know, visually cold and oppressive and creating that as well. So um, we spoke a lot about... Uh, the the backgrounds the atmos um, and then of course about just keeping keeping to those performances keeping everything about what's happening on screen and those those performances and, and not having too much sound to distract from that um, and I think the wonderful thing of how it was shot with those expanses and then the close ups it really allowed us to kind of do that with the sound you know we would have these you know quite sparse environments and then we would cut in to the you know the rolling a cigarette or the, the the rope braiding and we could really you know detail that with foley and design um yeah so yeah no that's great i love i want to ask you a lot of, i love those insert shots I, like you said i think they really are so powerful and and nuanced and and they really do kind of add to it i guess like how do you make the perfect to find the perfect like cigarette rolling sound or the perfect rope you know making or like even like there's a, I think they're like he like cuts open he cuts like a I forget it's like the scarf or a silk sheath like a knife it's just is like all these very small things that sound like really incredible and obviously because the film is so contemplative and nuanced it really does stand out and I, I guess can you talk a little about like defining those sounds and like making them sound like they do well we have a great Foley team um Mario Vicaro who I think he's so good at doing detail for those kind of things as well and our sound designer Dave Whitehead he got a lot of the props from set and he spent a few days you know with the saddle and everything recording everything and creating this amazing library um, with Phil's boots as well um, the spurs um, and then there was a lot of um, location sound that Richard had recorded as well which was really fantastic especially Phil's boots that you know solid sound in the house and, and that kind of thing so it was about um, yeah I, I guess a lot of just trial and error and seeing, you know, when it came to me for the effects mix, um, you know, I did spend a lot of time, you know, working out, okay, can we use all three together? Can we have, you know, sync effects, um, Dave's design and the Foley or, you know, sometimes, and I'd try to make it work because there was a lot of times where they all had their own, you know, element that brought something to it. Um, so, you know, in other cases, I might be like, oh, let's just go with the, the sync for this because, you know, um, it's just easier <laughs> but for this film I spent a lot of time because that was kind of the focus in terms of the the effects side of things um, seeing like spending time seeing if we could make it work with all three or whether it was just a combo of two or on that kind of thing right how about for another you mentioned like the the Burbank house and stuff and obviously like Phil's guitar I think is such a you know it's, it's so menacing and threatening and I guess I feel like it could have sounded a lot of different ways, even as I'm sure like the instrument sounds like it does. And I feel like the way you guys, it just sounds so menacing, I guess. And can you talk about like finding the right mix and how you guys kind of did that, especially when he's like using it to taunt uh, uh, Kirsten Dunst's character, of course, is, is just, it's just so like, a, like menacing, like I said. And I just love, yeah, how did you guys think of that and how did you kind of work on that? Yeah, I guess that kind of 
came about in the in the mix because you know having then access to the Dolby Atmos. Um, I mean, the the banjo player that we that we had come on um, during the edit, he was so good. Like in the recordings, like he'd just watch it and play. He wouldn't have to do two takes. It would just he'd just be watching it, and then it was just amazing. It was so it was so cool to watch. But um, yeah, I think for that scene in particular, it was definitely a lot to do with um, the the using Dolby Atmos. So you know, because obviously Phil is is up, up up on the stairs, and then when he's looking down on Rose and really you know it's it's not the only scene where where he's in that kind of position we've used his boots and stuff throughout the film to kind of do that as well and I think um we slowly kind of um come into Rose's perspective so I think when it starts he's up on the stairs and she's down in the piano and then as it kind of builds and builds that tension builds you know it starts panning in through to the center to really create that kind of be in Rose's head and that tension that she's feeling yeah, I apologize. I called it a guitar. I know it was a banjo. Oh, no. <laughs> my, my you mean obviously you mentioned Jane. Uh, you know, is what was? I mean, she's obviously an incredible filmmaker. One one of the most uh, you know recognized and, and, and lauded in the last like fifty years. Let's say uh, you know what what surprised you or what was so what what were you so excited about getting to work with her up like up close like that? What maybe surprised you? Um, I guess from a personal level, it's always a joy to be able to have the opportunity to work with a female director. And Jane is also actively supports female creatives in her team. I briefly worked with her on Top of the Lake too. I just came on at the end um, just to help with the mix, just assist in the mix. And it was um, the first time I'd ever been in a mix room where there was an equal amount of women and men. So um, it, it, was, it, it was a great experience for me. And, um, and yeah, I just love that she's just very focused on the story, which, you know, um, whenever I think about sound and stuff, I'm always you know love just trying to focus on whether or not it's right for um whether it's helping the story or not it doesn't like there might be something that could be cool to do but is it really helping the story no and I really love that Jane has such a strong focus on that and the performances and you know the, the dialogue is just so important in her films and um yeah I just I it's a, it's a, it was a great experience <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I mean, it is interesting, the dialogue I love because it's like, they're all so, uh, so closed and uh, internalized that when they do speak, it is just like, you know, it's like, it is, it's so powerful. And I think it does come through, especially when you have like, I just, you know, the tone, the tenor of the voices, I just love uh, Jesse Plum's and Bennett come back. Their the voices are so rich, I feel like. So it also adds like another layer to their, uh, the sound of their performance, I think is really, really cool. Last thing here before we wrap up, Tara, was there, I mean, what was like for you, a, the biggest challenge or something that you were so, you know, like, Maybe like, oh, this is not working. And then you were so excited to actually get it right, I guess. For me, it was always that concern. Maybe we were stripping back too much of the sound um, because we did want to kind of, we were trying to create that stylized naturalism, but, you know, um, really not take focus off what was happening. Um, so we did strip back a lot um, and more so in the mix. And I guess it was always um, a worry that, oh, perhaps we've taken too much out. It's going to throw the audience a bit, but um, I think, I hope and think that in the end, we found a really good balance between, you know, just having um, enough that it, you know, the audience feels the environment that they're in and, and then also then focuses on those, the sounds that you do hear, um, which help with that tension and, and suspense. And Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a beautiful film and, and wonderful work. Uh, Tara Webb, sound effects editor and re-recording mixer for Power of the Dog. Thank you so much, Tara. Appreciate it. Thank you.